Hey yo, people! You're watching the Amateur Pretzel, and like I said last time, I'm going to be building a few raid farms today. <laughs> As you can see, I've got all my supplies set up right here, and they're three different colors because there are three different tutorials that I will be following. The tutorials I will be following are the latest versions from each of these three creators, Prowl, JC Plays, and Silent Whisperer. Now, each of these are the same type of raid farm, but they're all subtly different and um, might have different issues depending on stuff. Ah, there we go. There's the wooden box that I made a while ago while I was exploring, so the pillager outpost should be around... Oh, it's right there. All right, so that's the first one. We're going to build Prowl's raid farm on top of this one. So for this first one, uh, I'm gonna conquer it on camera. I, I just decided that two seconds ago. <laughs> but first I gotta sleep. And of course this is the point where the footage got choppy, but isn't that just uh, appropriate for the heat of battle, don't you think? It all goes red and you don't remember everything that happens. But we can get back to the in the moment commentary now. Oh wait, there's one more, I can hear him. Let's eat a carrot first. It's not in here. Sounds like he's right here. Oh, he's Banner Guy. Okay, so I have Bad Omen now. <laughs> that shouldn't matter until uh, later. Yeah, we got some string. I, I don't have an incredible source of string, so that's good. Um, yeah, so we're here now. That wasn't, that wasn't too hard to conquer at all. Nice. I, f I feel good. I feel... I feel good. Now, the first thing that Prowl says to do is to uh, block the spawning spots. However, he is, uh, he did not show exactly how to do that. He didn't show how to find those spawning spots. Now, I know from the other tutorials how to do it, but for the sake of science and the science of comparison, I will just do it the way he showed, which Visually means that this is the spawning spot, I think, compared to the chest. I don't know. We'll, we'll do what it shows and then see if that works, right? The other ones will be more thorough, but we'll, we, we have to see if this works first. Okay, I was a little off. The spawning spot is right here, according to Prowl's video. For the other tutorials, there's this glass pane trick we'll use, but for this one, we're going to see if just putting it right there works. You see it's like a L shape away from the chest. Like the way a, a, a knight moves in chess uh, towards the stairs, but yeah. All right, before we actually start, um, Prowl does not include a materials list. Um, so I have meticulously counted up all the materials and they are in these boxes. Here is the stuff in the first box and here is a bunch of stuff in the second box. Um, Prowl's design uses considerably less leaves than the rest, if that means anything to you. But I'm just gonna go ahead and build it according to the tutorial. I might pop in and say something about it uh, along the way, but for the most part, we should just jump to the finished product. So here we go. So, I ran out of solid blocks. Um, yeah, that's what happens when the materials list isn't... Uh, present. <laughs> uh, you run out of stuff. Um, so I took down the whole roof of the outpost and it's starting to rain. Um, hoping that'll give me enough solid blocks to finish up. Yeah, I'm nearly done. I just need to finish all the protection blocks and stuff to keep stuff from glitching out. And then I think I'll be done. I'm going to try to use cobble deep slate for the ones that are closer to the lava, but the rest of uh, the planks should be fine. I just don't want the planks to start burning spontaneously, because that wouldn't be fun to fix, <laughs> especially as I'm not too great at flying yet. All right, so I have the whole farm built, but I wasn't getting any uh, pillagers to spawn over here. So I think the spawning spot was wrong that I had, and I'm going to have to move this trident killer. and the spawn thing. So, 
I'm going to climb up this scaffolding and see where the guy spawns. There we go. Right at the corner of that right there. So he spawned right on this corner. So it's either this block or this block. Um, all right. And you can tell that it's this block because uh, that way is the negative direction between the two of them. So if he was spawning here, he would be spawning on this corner and not that corner. So I think I had it built right. I, I don't know what's going on. Um, oh, I have an idea. The, the trident killer is two by two. So if we, ouch, if we move it over this way by one block, then we can set up this right here with the, the same glass setup, uh, like this, hold on. And then they'll get pushed into there. So I'm gonna move this over and see if that starts working. Oh, we've got a spawn. <laughs> Perfect timing. <laughs> Oh, I, I had just clicked the record button. <laughs> oh, perfect timing. Perfect timing. Nice. Now I can give it a test run. <laughs> um, yeah, I've got the whole farm built. We've got the village right there. We've got a AFK spot. Nice. Now that we've actually got spawns, I can actually test the farm. And we've already got a banner guy in there. Turn the trident killer on. I've got bad omen. And as soon as I get up to my AFK spot, a rage start. <laughs> oh, perfect! Oh, snap, snap, my ender chest. Okay. <laughs> oh, uh, don't leave any spawnable blocks. <laughs> or you'll, you'll uh, regret it. Okay, I've just got to turn on this lever. Now the trident killer's going. We've got, uh, raiders down there. Okay. If they're part of the raid, then this could be a problem. If killing these- yeah. So, shooting these guys lowers the raid bar. So, that means, uh, it's part of the raid spawned down there. Or the whole raid. It didn't seem, in the tutorial, it didn't seem like Prowl had any problems with this, and his was the more recent tutorial than of all of them. Um, oh, yep, they all spawned down there. You know what it could be? It could be the elevation of the land. Uh, you see, because there's this hill that comes up really close to the top of the pillager outpost, and it could be that those spots are just close enough to the village. Maybe I should raise the village? I don't know. I, for the sake of science, I don't want to do a lot of uh, tweaks to the farm. To that end, I'm going to get out of this raid situation and go build a different one. <laughs> All right, I've found the other outpost that I have previously found. Um, this one is pretty near the end portal. At least since it's snowy here, I think I'm going to do silence design here because that, that accounts for snow. Okay, first hitch. The materials list does not include the glass panes it takes to uh, test out where the spawn spots are. So I'm having to um, smelt up some sand to make some glass. So hopefully that's enough. Oh, nearly. Nearly. So close. I need two more. Just two. Boink, boink. Nice. Oh, we've got several. Okay, now we've got these guys in this one. And they spawn in on southeast. And I'm actually going to use a map for this because that's what the tutorial says. And I think it'd also be cool to actually have a map of this place. And now I'm going to head back to the tutorial, and I'll see you, uh, 
Hopefully when it's done. <laughs> uh, hopefully I don't run into any other issues. Um, the... The pillagers keep, uh, if I can talk, the pillagers keep, uh, getting out. I don't know if they're escaping from here or coming from a different spawning spot. Um, so, to check, I put a leaf there to keep them from spawning here. If they're coming from another place, um, they just won't be able to get into the tower, and then later... I'm going to take down the tower and just cover the place with leaves um, so that none of those spawn. Another issue I'm having is that uh, my trident killer keeps breaking. Yeah, so I would have the... I'm supposed to have the trident right here, but it keeps like going into weird places and then not doing anything. Um, so, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to make that work. If not, I'm just going to switch it out for a normal trident killer. Um, because, yeah. Uh, I, think, I think the point of this trident killer is that it's a little faster. But, I'm not sure about that. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, but, this isn't really important to be fast because it's the bad omen one and not the... Uh, the one that kills the actual raiders. So, this this one I'm less worried about. So, I'm going to set that aside and deal with this problem later. <laughs> and in the meantime, use these blocks so that they don't come after me. Yeah, I've set up a little camp out here because they keep climbing up my stairs. And it's not cool. It's not cool. Um, Yeah, so one thing I've already learned about tutorials is that in the materials list of those who do include materials lists, they do not include the scaffolding to get where you want to go, or temporary blocks. So, I'll keep that in mind in the future. Alright, villager is in place, and the farm is built. Now all I gotta do is figure out that trident thing. Uh, and clean up this, this big mess. <laughs> Yeah, since this since this uh, outpost is so close to the to the end, uh, the end portal, um, I only had to move the villager uh, a couple hundred blocks. Yeah, not nothing too bad. Um, for the other one, I had to go through the Nether to find a village. <laughs> uh, that was that was scary. Um, um, for that one, I ended up digging a tunnel at level 15 because that is a surprisingly peaceful pl part of the nether <laughs> if I can talk oh goodness okay but yeah we've got the villager we've got the beds we've got the spawning platform and the lava column and the trident killer down there now all we've got to do is uh, tear down this outpost and fix the trident killer that's there so that it's actually operational. Oh, and those leaves above the AFK platform, those aren't part of the design. I put those there because it makes it really easy to get to the platform. All you have to do is fly up from beneath and then you hit your head on the leaves and then you're there. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's an accessibility thing. All right, so I replaced the weird trapdoor trident killer with this, uh, pretty standard one, just using uh, redstone torches. Um, and that should be the farm done. As the sun is setting, but that shouldn't be a problem, I've, as you can see, I've torn down most of the outpost and covered it with leaves. Um, the tutorial does not say to cover anything else with leaves, so I will not be covering anything else with leaves, and if raids spawn on the ground, that's that's the the tutorial thing. <laughs> we'll we'll see if this design doesn't need leaves on the ground. We'll see if it works. And the thing is right there, so I just gotta hit my head on the leaves and then I'm in. And then we just turn that on. I'll turn the game sounds down in editing, but um as soon as 
a captain spawns and we get bad omen, it should start working. Oh! <laughs> and there we go. I probably don't even have to cut that. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, the raid bar's filling up. It just goes right back down. It's going up. And it's going up. And it's going up. It's filling up. And it didn't even... It didn't even... It didn't even fill up all the way before it started going down. Oh, that's hilarious. Okay, so there's some mobs stuck. They're probably at the top. There's probably a Ravager in lava. Hold on, if I flick this, I should be able to hear. Oh, what happened to my leaves? Uh, uh oh. That is the sign of a Ravager. Alright, so they're not in here. So they probably didn't even spawn in here. That could be a problem. Where are the other raiders? Oh, no! There's the Ravager down there. Oh, no. Oh, and he's mashing up all my leaves! Oh, stinky ravagers. So that means I'm gonna need to put a bunch of leaves all over down there. So that that doesn't happen again. What was that? I think I heard like alligator teeth. That do you hear that splashing? That's that's crazy sounding. <gasps> Ow! Oh no. Oh, uh, there's vexes. There's vexes. There's a vex. Okay, this was supposed to be quick enough that uh, vexes don't even spawn, but uh, apparently not. Alright, so I think all these leaves should do something, um, but I'm not here to tell you how to fix farms. I'm here to see which tutorial is the best to follow, which has the least issues. So. I'm gonna leave this the way it is for now. Go make JC Plays' farm and see if that has, uh, if I have any less trouble with that. We are getting lots of drops though. Like that's, that's just from these two raids that have been going on and this second one isn't even finished. Um, but, and that, yeah, that one's just going as I'm sitting down here placing leaves. Um, so I'm gonna head on over to a third pillager outpost, which I have not been to yet, so I, I've got to lick one up. These, these first two I found organically, but, uh, this third one I'm gonna go to chunk base for. But yeah, I'm gonna go over there, build JC Plays' farm, and we'll see if we have any less issues with that one. <laughs> Look what I found. Look what I found. I was flying towards the, the coordinates. Of the outpost and look there's a lush <laughs> a lush cave beneath here oh i'm gonna come back here at some point not today because we've got other things to do but oh look there's the outpost <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> oh wow just like both the other times i'm gonna pull up the tutorial if there are any issues i'll bring you in tip number one for following a tutorial in survival Water is incredible scaffolding. Let me show you. Yep. Oh, I guess I'm falling down. Oh. Well, that's 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 what happens when you don't have water as scaffolding. All right. So, water trick. Climb up to the top. Got my water bucket. And I'm going to put the water bucket to the side of this. Now, what I'm supposed to be doing here, oh, Oh, there we go. See? Water. Best scaffolding. Best scaffolding is water. No doubt about it. Um, but point is, um, I was supposed to come down eight blocks from here. There we go. See? With the vines, I can't do that. With the water, I can. So, 
if you're ever having trouble uh, following a creative tutorial in survival, use water. Water's your friend. It's not Torch's friend, but it's friend for everything else. <laughs> that's that's the first that's that's the only issue I've had so far, aside from the fact that I forgot to craft minecart hoppers for this one. Um, but other than that, it's it's going really well. It's going really well. All right, uh, I've got it. I've got it built. I, I've got it built. <laughs> um, I had to finick with the redstone tower a little bit, but that's because I built it wrong the first time. So, not not a tutorial problem. So, don't need to include that. Um, also, uh, the only other thing was that uh, villager up there popped out of the the leaves and was standing on top, so I just built a little leaf barrier above him. I also put a solid block above his head with a leaf on top of that. This chest is also not part of the design. I'm uh, going to take off all my stuff and put it in there so I can test this raid farm without uh, fearing for losing any of my stuff. But other than that, we're ready to test it. All right, um, I just sat through three raids. It didn't take very long at all, uh, and I'm feeling like this is this is my favorite uh, raid farm so far. I haven't compared any data yet, but I feel like I feel like this is my favorite one. I've gone through and I've made all of the raid farms fully operational. That has meant um, some tweaking to some of the designs. As you can see, this is Silence Design behind me. Yeah, so down there. I don't think I added any more leaves after that, but I haven't been having any raiders spawn down there at all. No no raiders down there at all. Um, I did have them squeeze through the top, though. If I fly up here and boink right there. Alright, so I had uh, a pillager standing on these leaves for some reason. I think he was riding the ravager because uh, there were two mobs remaining and one of them was a ravager that I could hear dying in lava. And after the ravager died, there was one left and he was growling and he was up here. And I wish you could have seen it, but I came up here and flew around and d did a Hawkeye with my bow. And it was pretty cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, sorry you don't get to see that, but... um. Yeah, so I don't think there were any problems with them spawning down there. They were just being uh, squeezed out of here somehow. Um, so um, if I were to make any more adjustments to this, it would be to keep them from squeezing out, probably adding a lot more solid blocks. The only issue with that is that I'd have to add a lot more leaves and string on top of that. Um, but that's, that's Silence Farm, completely operational. And now I'll go and show you Prowl's Farm. All right, now I'm over here at Prowl's Farm. Um, one thing I should note is that these leaves on top of the uh, the lower training killer, uh, this formation isn't part of my, it's not part of my edited design. It's just like this so that I could like have a tower from which to shoot pillagers because I had a lot a lot of pr trouble with them spawning down there on the ground. Now, as you can see, I carved away a lot of the land and covered it with leaves. Um, I, I actually learned something about uh, leaves and ravagers. Because, you see, ravagers can walk on top of leaves. And if they walk on top of the leaves, they don't smash them. Which is really cool. Very cool. Um, that very cool discovery led to a lot of work, though, because I wanted to make the layer of leaves very flat with no opportunity anywhere for a Ravager to jump up and smash it. They could probably get up here and cause some damage there, but uh, I haven't had any problems with that. So, we're good. Oh, I also have a bunch of horses, because <laughs> I, got, I got a little and distracted sometimes. Um, but... Along with the carving away of the land, um, because that just took a really, really long time, 
and it wasn't completely working. So the other solution I had was to move the villager up a little bit. So there's the village. It used to be um, several blocks down that way. Um, but uh, but um, uh, carving away all the land wasn't working very much, and it took a lot of effort and time. So I thought, you know, it's probably actually easier to move a villager than to deal with this landscape. So I, I moved the villager up a little bit. It took like uh, a Minecraft day because uh, the villager didn't want to go up there, go up to the bed until he was ready to sleep. But he's there now. Um, but yeah, that's it. And it's fully operational. It completely works. So, I'm going to go back to my geode base where I've set something up. Here I am, back in my base, and you can see the shulker boxes behind me. And in these shulker boxes, I have put things to help me score these farms. So, for Prowl, we have uh, outpost height. Now, this is not a flaw of the design of the farm, but rather a flaw in my own um, my own choice of the outpost. Yeah, the outpost I chose for Prowl's farm was uh, not, not high enough from the ground, and that led to a lot of issues. Issues that uh, I did not foresee, um, and that Prowl did not warn me for, but it's not Prowl's fault. Second thing, um, no materials list. This, this is a big one. That is a big uh, drawback because I had to, I had to spend uh, a lot more time um, watching the tutorial just to figure out how many materials I needed. Now, I would suggest whenever you watch a tutorial that you watch it multiple times, but it helps so much, so much to know ahead of time what materials you need and not to have to count through a video as you're watching it in order to figure out what you need just so that you don't run out of stuff you know <laughs> um uh third thing uncertain spawn spot so he didn't give a way to find out where the exact spawn spots were um he just said that here's the spawn spot and while it did work for the outpost I chose, I don't think the same spawn spot would have worked for uh, either of the outposts that I chose uh, for Silent or JC Place. I raised the bed to account for this, so this isn't a, a con of uh, the farm, just something I changed. But one really good thing about Prowl's tutorial was just the style of it which promoted learning and engagement. When I when I watched his tutorial, I felt like I understood a lot more about how raid farms work. And he's a fun guy to watch. So I was learning and I was engaged while I was watching his video. So that is a big plus for a tutorial. That that is an important thing for a tutorial because um, I like being able to solve problems and a tutorial that just told me where to put blocks uh, doesn't tell me how to solve problems it just uh, tells me how to build something block by block it doesn't teach me anything but Prowl he taught me how to build a raid farm I had some issues but I was able to solve those issues um, based on what I learned about raid farms. Not necessarily all from his video, but a, a lot from his video. Now, moving on to Silent. Um, Silent had outpost, outpost height issues, maybe? Not sure whether that, uh, was a thing. It might have just been the, the stuff escaping from the the lava column. One other thing I had a problem with, and forgive my spelling, is the trident killer. 
the Trapdoor Trident Killer. It's a really interesting design, but also uh, hard to figure out for me. Like I just said about uh, tutorials, this tutorial only showed me how to build the Trident Killer and not how it works. So I ended up just building a basic Trident Killer to replace the one that I couldn't make work. And last thing is temporary blocks. Silent included a materials list, but um, something I learned from that is that it does not include temporary blocks. So whenever you're watching a tutorial, uh, in order to make something, watch it several times. It's like a recipe. Watch it through first so you understand what's going to happen, and then watch it through as you're building it, like, like a recipe when you're cooking. Now, for the plus sides of Silent's tutorial. And let me just say, I put the same thing in here, because Silent is great at tutorials. <laughs> um, he doesn't always include why to do things, uh, as in the trapdoor trident killer, but he's really fun to watch, and I learned while I was watching his tutorial about la lava and string and leaves and stuff like that. I, I learned stuff. I learned stuff that'll help me solve problems later if I need to. And the other bonus was that I have a map of the thing. <laughs> I don't I don't know if I'm ever going to use a map of the thing, but I've got a map of the thing, and I like that for some reason. <laughs> Uh, but, but let's go to JC Plays. Um, and the thing with JC Plays is that I had absolutely zero issues, zero issues building this farm. Uh, the only thing I interrupted my building the farm for was to show you guys that water trick, <laughs> uh, which is pretty on brand now that I think about it. Um, but yeah. <sighs> Um, zero issues. Zero issues. Zero confusion. I always knew, well, well, I had, I, I built the, <laughs> I built the torch tower wrong the first time, but that was my fault. Uh, it wasn't a flaw in the tutorial, it was just, um, me not doing it right. But yeah, he walked me through every single step of the raid farm building. But you might notice that there is no golden learning and engagement carrot in here. And that's because uh, he's he's not as engaging to watch as the other two. And I didn't really learn about how raid farms work from watching his tutorial. I learned how to build it, but not why it's built that way. So that's why I've got this textbook in here. He, he, he sounds kind of like a textbook. Put this here and this here and this here, and this here, and yeah. And I also got a map for his farm, which is pretty cool. Um, the reason we've got this here is because there was a minor issue where the villager uh, woke up from the bed and popped up onto the leaves. And because of that, I had to like change the way the villager cell was built, but that wasn't much of a hassle, so no big deal. So, based on all of that, which of these is the best farm to build for an amateur pretzel? Well, it depends on what you want. I would not say silence, probably not the best for an amateur. Um, you could probably follow his tutorial pretty easily, but uh, dealing with some of the issues might be a uh, a bit of a struggle for someone who doesn't know what they're doing. Now, between the other two, it really depends on what you want. If all you want is a raid farm, and you don't care, uh, you don't care about uh, learning or anything, or or why stuff works, then JC Plays is probably the the one to go for because he tells you exactly what to do and how to do it and generally in a good order of doing things. Um, you would want to watch the whole thing through and consider what steps you could do at the same time. Just because building it in survival means that 
you can't fly and do some of the things in the same order he does. Um, but if you want to be able to understand how raid farms work in Bedrock Edition and you want to be able to understand the problems you're having and fix stuff when those problems happen, then I would say Prowl is the one to go for. He's not very specific about stuff, but he does get the concept across. So it really just comes down to whether you want the details, the nitty gritty details, the step by step, or the big picture. How does this work? Why does this work? And what's the best way to do it? I'm not, I'm not trying to downgrade Silence Farms at all. It's, it's a great design. Um, but it does have that issue where there are mobs squeezing out of the top. And that is, that's not a fun issue. Well, it can be fun. <laughs> uh, that's not an easy issue to deal with. But there you go. It, this has been <laughs> way too long coming. But uh, there are my raid farm ratings for you. In terms of what's coming next, I'm probably going to take it a little more slowly just because I have a lot of work to do for school because I'm, I'm graduating this semester and I've got a lot, a lot of projects to, well, a lot of pro- I have a big project I'm working on for school and I need to, I need to be able to put my focus on that. So I'm going to aim for every other week, probably on Thursdays. Yeah, a bit, a bit of change of schedule, but that's, that's what I think I can manage at this point. So, until next time, I've been the Amateur Pretzel. Thank you for watching, and stay hydrated. Bye!